Welcome to this run through of Actuals vs Forecast in Bricks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to enter your actual data into Bricks and give you an overview of the feature. So what's this all about? The basic principle is that you can look at what's going well in your business and what isn't going so well and compare this to your original predictions in your BRICS plan. So it doesn't just show you how well your business is performing, but it puts your original assumptions to the test. All right, let's take a look. I'm in the reporting area of my BRICS plan, and here I can tick this Show Actuals checkbox to display additional actual data alongside my forecast. I'm looking at my cash flow forecast at the moment, and when I turn on Actuals, you can see the first three months have my actual data associated with them already. I'll show you how this data got there in a minute. This additional information appears in the row below the account they are being compared with. At the top of my cash flow is the cash received account, uh, which is all the cash I received from my sales. Uh, and below it, you can see my actual result with a percentage number showing the difference between them. As per normal with a BRICS report, you can drill into the account to reveal the activities coming from your plan. Now, in this example plan, my sales are split down by different channels, and you can see my predictions for how each would perform against how they really did in reality. So it's here as I drill down that you can analyze what's going well versus what isn't, which is what this process is all about. Actuals are entered at the most detailed component level, and then BRICS totals up all the groups, sections, and accounts and calculates the comparison at each of these levels for you. To use a buzzword, it's going to give you insights about how different parts of your business are performing and not just a top level figure that you can't easily trace. So doing this comparison exercise will help inform your decision making process. If you're regularly checking BRICS and analyzing your progress, it will help you think more strategically about your business. So I can use the frequency control in the top right to change this variance report from monthly to quarterly or to yearly, and BRICS will total up your results automatically. Uh, so you can do reviews at this point in time if you want to as well. So how did I create these variance reports? Well, your forecasts are built by the components in your plan, and these components allow you to set assumptions around what you're doing, which then automates the completion of all the reports at the same time. Right, so since we're now dealing with real results and not something based on assumptions, we, we need a slightly different method for entering this information. For example, the cash result for a specific source of income might be recognized at a different time to the revenue for the same source of income over on your profit and loss. So we provide the option to enter this separately on both the cash flow and the profit and loss. Okay, so head over to the Actuals tab in the menu and you will find this method of data entry. And you can see it's split out by the three key financial reports, your cash flow, profit and loss and balance sheet on these tabs here. To begin with, you don't actually have to fill all of them out if you don't want to. It might be that cash flow is all you're interested in tracking, so it's completely fine just to fill in this tab and leave the others blank if they aren't going to be useful to you. If you are interested in com the complete financial picture and you have all the data easily accessible, then you could fill in all three tabs. It's up to you how you want to use this and what your business needs to see. So looking down the page, you can see several grids split by account heading. Remember earlier, we were looking at cash received at the top of the cash flow. And you can see this heading is also here at the top. This entire page is an exact mirror of the cash flow report. Every heading you see there will appear here in the same order. Uh, this is the same when we go across to the Profit and Loss tab or the Balance Sheet. Now, underneath each heading, you can see the components coming from your plan. 
Um, now, if you've built a large and detailed plan, you might be thinking that there is a lot to type out here, but in, in reality, this should only take a few minutes of your time uh, since you're, you're only dealing with one column at a time each month. And we also have a couple of techniques to help speed up the process. Um, firstly, you might have noticed that each cell already has a light grey number in the background, even when you haven't filled out any data yet. This is the number that you originally forecast, and it's there to help orientate you so you aren't just facing a blank spreadsheet. So you can see everything is all lined up, ready, ready to go to make data entry as painless as possible. All the items on this page are in exactly the same order as your plan. If you reorder your plan, the structure here will adjust automatically too, uh, moving all the numbers for you. If you've turned anything off in your plan, they'll be hidden here as well. Now, if I scroll down to cash paid on goods and services, remember this is another heading from our cash flow, uh, and this is where many of the costs of your business sit. Down here, I know that I have a large chunk of fixed costs, and I know for a fact that these are going to be exactly the same as my forecast, because they're things like rent, internet bills, software subscriptions, they're the predictable stuff that rarely changes. So here is a quick way to fill them out. When I double click on a cell, the forecast value appears highlighted. Now, if the actual results were different, I can just type over it. If it's the same as in this case, I can just press enter on my keyboard and it will confirm this value, moving down to the next cell and highlighting the next, next number to do the same thing. So as you can see, I can just hit enter on my keyboard several times to speed through these fixed costs. And you may have a sizable portion of these entries um, things like loans with repayments that have been agreed in advance, you can just double click and press enter each month. So going back up to cash received, I'm now dealing with sales results which are a bit less predictable. Here I'm going to copy and paste from a spreadsheet. Now my spreadsheet is already set up such that my sources of income match the level of detail my BRICS forecast is in, and it's also in the same order, so I can just grab the numbers and insert them into Bricks immediately. So if you can get a spreadsheet output set up like this from whatever you're using to record your sales transactions, it will save you a bit of time when you go through this process each month. Now, if it's hard to modify your data source, remember it's easy to reorder items in Bricks. Drag and drop items in your plan to change their order. If that then makes it easier, to copy and paste items from a spreadsheet. Uh, on the cash flow, uh, just make sure that when you do copy these results, uh, and this is relevant to everything you enter on this page, that the figures exclude any taxes you took in the transaction. Taxes are recorded on the cash flow, but they are recorded separately down the bottom of your cash flow, just like on the forecast report. And it's really important to account for them separately, as you'll need to pay this amount to the government later on. Uh, it may mean you have to do a little bit of extra juggling with your figures, but we enforce this good practice because the tax bill is something that, that catches many businesses off guard if they're not focused on it. Finally, if a completely new activity occurred in reality that wasn't forecast at all, this is very easy to add. Let's say you took on a brand new, unexpected type of cost. Perhaps you purchased a subscription to a new software tool that you want to see in its own line. For this example, all I need to do is add an operational cost to my plan where I want it, and just leave the forecast blank for now. So this then immediately appears in my Actuals Data Entry tab. I can fill in the cost as per normal, when I head back to the variance report once more, I can see this has been represented as a new line where the forecast is blank and the actual has the correct value I entered. You then have the option of entering this new cost in your forecast going forward if you want to. The same process can be applied for any unplanned activity. If you purchased a new asset, such as a computer, then, then you can add a new asset component to the plan and do the same thing. So once you've completed a month of data, 
you can head back to your reports to see the results. Uh, remember, you can share this plan with as many viewers as you like, not just your team members, and viewers will be able to see these variance reports as well. You can also see your final cash result compared in the dashboard chart as well, and you can hover over the cash line to show your actual result and the forecast to compare the two. Whether you are presenting to an investor or just keep keeping your team up to speed on results, this is a key tool for any business looking to drive growth through decision making that's informed by data. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.